His crucifixion began about nine o'clock in the morning. Even the inscription they placed over him was intended to mock him. This is the King of the Jews. Those passing by on their way into or out of Jerusalem insulted and ridiculed him. At noon, the day suddenly darkened for three hours across the entire land. Then Jesus cried out with a loud voice, and he took his last breath. The Roman centurion, the soldier in charge of the executions, stood in front of Jesus, heard his words, and saw the manner of his death. Surely this man was the Son of God. Near the place he was crucified, there was a garden with a newly prepared tomb. Because it was the day of preparation, they arranged to lay Jesus in this tomb so they could rest on the Sabbath. After the Sabbath, as the light of the next day, the first day of the week, crept over Palestine, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb to keep vigil. Earlier, there had been an earthquake. A messenger of the Lord had come down from heaven and had gone to the grave. He rolled away the stone and sat down on top of it. He veritably glowed. He was vibrating with light. His clothes were light, white like transfiguration, like fresh snow. The messenger spoke to the women, to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Don't be afraid. I know you are here keeping watch for Jesus who was crucified. Jesus is not here. He was raised, just as he said he would be. Come over to the grave and see for yourself. And then go straight to his disciples and tell them that he's been raised from the dead and has gone on to Galilee. You'll find him there. Listen carefully to what I am telling you. The women were both terrified and thrilled, and they quickly left the tomb and went to find the disciples and give them this outstandingly good news. But while they were on their way, they saw Jesus himself. Rejoice! The women fell down before him, kissing his feet and worshiping him. Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. Tell them I will meet them there. <laughs> 